Okay, so um, I'm going to begin. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for joining me today, um, which is a decidedly drizzly day in Bristol. I'm not sure why um, you might not be able to see my video here. Um, but anyway, let me see. Um, for those of you who don't know me or Senderos, I am Nicola and we are a UK-based um, marketing PR agency specialising in promoting the place where conservation, science and tourism meet in Latin America. Um, like many of you, Latin America is our passion and today I'm delighted to briefly showcase just a few of our uh, amazing clients. Um, three that uh, might be termed wilderness lodges in remote locations all offering inclusive experiences and explorations in the surrounding area. I'm going to start in southern Chilean region of the Aysen district before, um, with Malin Colorado Eco Lodge for, before heading across to um, the border and further south to the Argentinian Patagonia and Los Glaciares National Park um, and then up to Peru and the Andes Mountains um, uh, in Machu Picchu with mountain lodges of Peru. Um, and their South and Thai Lodge to Lodge Trek. Okay, um, I'm going to start uh, with Manon Colorado Eco Lodge um, on the western end of Lake General Carrera in the Aysen district. Um, Malin, Colorado is a remote adventure experience in the middle of the pristine region of Aysen on the southern Cada Terra Austral. Um, <clears throat> the lodge is located just above this very iconic route which runs all the way down through the Aysen region um, with thick forests surrounding the property and with the mountain uh, range rising up behind as a beautiful backdrop. Um, it is also 250 kilometres south of Balmaceda Airport. Um, this link would take you to a Google page which shows that, but um, that unfortunately won't work because of the screen sharing. Um, but it's about a four to five hours drive south from Balmaceda Airport, which is near the town of Koyaike. Um, and about a third of that road is actually unpaved. Oh no, it's paved and two thirds of it is unpaved. It's quite a rocky road. And so I would recommend people traveling this route to have a four by four vehicle. Um, but um, it's actually very well maintained during the season anyway. Uh, so the 4x4 just kind of generally uh, guarantees, guarantees a, um, a smoother, smoother ride. Um, it is but also about 50 kilometres south of Rio Tranquilo, um, where many people take the Marble Caves ex um, excursion from, and also where they go exploring into the mountains um, and the glaciers. And it's about 15 kilometres west of Puerto Guadal, um, which is the nearest small town, um, and where a number of um, there are a number of little shops and also um, a surprising number of microbreweries. Um, Balmaceda is about a two and a half hour flight south of um, Santiago, and it's about an hour's flight from Puerto Montt. Um, depending what the new schedules are going to look like after lockdown. Um, It'll, it'll probably be the, similar to what it was before, perhaps um, less frequency, but there were daily flights from Santiago uh, with LATAM and then um, a few times a week with uh, LATAM and Sky from, from Puerto Montt. Um, so the Aysen region, just as a, like a brief introduction, is on the western side of the Andes in northern Patagonia, further south than the Lake District and north of the Torres del Paine area of the Chilean Patagonia region. Uh, many of the lakes here are fed by large, fast running rivers and also the glaciers that come off the northern ice fields. Um, and the area here, here has its own microclimate um, in that it does not suffer quite as much wind as the wider plains of southern Patagonia, but it does get a lot more rainfall, um, which is what makes the landscape so luscious and green. Um, it's a region which is growing in popularity for those searching for a more immersive exploration of Patagonia. Um, but it's still remote enough that you won't find crowds of tourists ascending onto the beauty spots. Um, the lodge is owned and run by a large Chilean family um, whose parents originally bought the land and started building accommodation in the 1990s. 
um, Paola, one of the daughters and um, also the main host of the lodge, spends most of the season down at Manon, Colorado, where she greets the guests and she gets to know them and she organises itineraries for people and generally makes sure that um, the, the smooth kind of day-to-day -day running of the lodge is going well. Um, so the lodge itself is set amongst a pine and lengo and nere forest uh, with numerous beds of bright alpine and meadow flowers. Um, all the buildings are made from the local wood and have wide views out over the lake and the mountains beyond. Um, the lodge itself is set in amongst um, yeah, the main meeting area and reception area, which are called the clubhouses, that, um, which is in this picture here. Um, this is where breakfast and dinner are also served, um, with set menus, um, and can be eaten outside as the sun goes down behind the mountains. Um, the food is typically Typical Southern Patagonian fare, so lots of kind of hearty soups and stews, quite a bit of meat, quite a bit of fish, um, but also a lot of vegetables as well, um, and all kind of washed down with excellent Chilean wine. Um, guests are also presented with a really good comprehensive and homemade and delicious packed lunch whilst taking excursions out during the day. Um, and each room is also presented with a complimentary bottle of wine during the stay. Um, depending on the occupancy of the lodge, the staff will also be able to host an asado in their quincho, um, which is generally kind of slow cooked lamb and beef steaks and um, big salads and, and things like that. Um, the 14 rooms um, are separated into two different main accommodation options. Um, this picture here is the main kind of uh, meeting room and um, relaxation area for the building they have which is called Casa Lenga which is their newest building. Um, this building has six double rooms or four double rooms sorry and two triple rooms um, all with views looking out across the lake um, and they have a shared terrace out that front as well where everyone has their own tables and chairs and can sit and chat to their neighbours about what they've been up to during the day and what kind of journeys they've been on. So this is an example of one of the rooms. Um, as you can see, they're quite cosy, um, but very kind of thoughtfully decorated and extremely comfortable. Then there are four individual log cabins, which are the original accommodation options. Um, and these uh, range between one and three bedrooms each. Uh, they all have these huge windows that look out towards the lake. Uh, they're equipped with like a wood burning stoves and the large ones have their own kitchenette. Um, they all feel very private, they all have their own parking spaces as well um, and they're perfect for people travelling together or couples and particularly families as well. Um, here are some examples of what the cabins look like inside and out, all with um, very cosy and soft furnishings, wide open views and letting a lot of natural light in. So what does the area have to offer? Um, a short drive north of the property at Playa Mansa, um, there's a small beach um, and there's a company there that takes visitors to see the famous and spectacular marble caves. Um, this can be done by motorised open boat, which you can see here in the photograph, um, or by kayak, and it's about a half day's excursion. Um, quite often the lodge will try and time this excursion right with the best weather conditions, as the caves are best seen with, with more sunlight. Um, but even so, the caves are really are a spectacular sight in any case, um, unlike anything else in the area. Um, the boats take people in and out of the small tunnels and channels, showing the incredible textures and colours of the marble that's been shaped um, by the water. And it also reflects this very bright blue turquoise glacial water, which brings out the colours in the marble. Um, the land which stretches up into the mountains behind the lodge, which is also owned by the family, has about 15 kilometers worth of paths which take guests um, to specific um, clearings with inc incredible panoramic views um, of kind of the mountain range and Bertrand Lake and the glaciers beyond. Um, guests can also do this by horseback. Um, they have their own horses here at the lodge and, um, uh, and they have their own riding guide as well. Um, and all the equipment needed for guests to feel kind of safe and comfortable. 
the riding isn't um, what you might call kind of exhilarating riding. It's all it's all fairly sedate and it's mainly all walking because it's uphill and downhill and through forests. So it's unlike the kind of wide plains of um, Patagonia you get further south. Um, but it's still a really lovely experience and, and the horses are very well trained. Um, and then the Rio Baker um, confluence is another beauty spot not far from the lodge where two of the fast flowing rivers meet offering um, spectacular views of the emerald and turquoise river rapids and mountains behind. Um, there's also a fantastic spot for a picnic and a stroll just to soak in the surrounding area. For the more adventurous, um, the lodge can organise some extra excursions including ice trekking on the Exploradores Glacier, kayaking on the lake um, General Carrera and whitewater rafting on Rib, um, River Baker. Um, which is also home to the best fly fishing in the area, um, which is something that we could inquire about if your, if your clients are interested in that. Um, all the excursions can be offered, all these excursions can be offered at an extra cost um, and they're generally full day activities. If clients would still like to see the glaciers, for example, the Exploradores Glacier and the San Rafael Glacier, which are the two most kind of well-known glaciers in the region, there's also excellent kind of mirador and viewpoints that, um, that can be all that, that visitors can go to and the lodge can organize those those visits as well um, so here are some examples of the kind of itineraries Mal and Colorado can offer your clients um, they can also offer rates for just bed and breakfast as well um, so they have generally have kind of two and three night self-drive packages with different options um, and then they have a three night all inclusive package um, as well, which includes a transfer. Um, but if they want to bring the price down a little bit and have a chair transfer, those transfers go on Tuesdays only. Um, they also have a five night all inclusive package, which was just released quite recently, um, which is about, I think, $2,500 per person. And this includes all the transport, all the accommodation, all the food. Um, as well as a visit to um, Parque Patagonia and the Chamanga Reserve, which is um, a couple of hours south of the lodge. And then every um, season they tend to release these kind of speciality packages. So um, last season they had one especially about the wildflowers and gardens of Patagonia, which was particularly in the, in the springtime of the season. Then they had like a foodie tour, um, and then they have a tour, uh, like an itinerary specif specifically for families. And then quite often they'll do like an autumnal tour um, when all the deciduous beech trees are just turning their leaves orange. And it's quite a spectacular sight to see all of this kind of carpet of orange and yellows across the landscape. Um, we're now going to head further south and across the border to Argentina and Los Glaciares National Park. Um, in the depths of which is located Estancia Cristina. Um, for those less familiar with the region, um, this circle on the map shows a rough estimate of where the Patagonia limits are. Um, where the ISEN region is fed um, is kind of around here, and this is all that fed from the, the northern ice field. And this is the southern ice field, so all the glaciers and lakes um, in kind of Los Glaciares National Park, I fed from the southern ice field. Um, El Calafate is the closest town to Estancia Cristina, and as all of you will know, it's um, a stop off point to, um, to visit Perito Moreno Glacier, which is over here, and um, many other natural attractions in the area. Um, one of the glaciers to come off the southern ice field is the Uppsala Glacier, which is the largest in the region um, and can only be viewed in all its glory from Estancia Cristina lookout point. Um, so a little bit of background, Estancia Cristina is situated on the northwestern corner of Lake Argentino um, and it was founded in 1914 by Joseph and Jesse Masters, um, who came from England with their two small children. They were a pioneering family who set up their sheep farm in some of the most inhospitable and solitary places in the world. Um, I don't really have time now to delve into the amazing feats and historical importance of the lodge, um, but we can fast forward many years and challenges to around 1997, um, when the owner, um, Janet, who was Joseph and Jesse's daughter-in-law, having married their son, 
sadly passed away and the property was completely refurbished to be able to receive overnight tourist guests rather than just the guests of um, explorers and climbers who had been welcomed here for many years previously. The Masters family with Janet knew how to transform this corner of Patagonia into their own small paradise and knew they'd want to share all of this beautiful natural beauty with visitors from across the globe and with help from National Parks Authority and the new owners and this has been able to become a reality. Um, so getting to the Estancia, the lodge is only accessible by boat across Lake Argentina. Um, so you first drive to Calafate, from Calafate to Cueta Bandera. Um, so this is our Calafate here and it's about an hour's drive to Cueta Bandera. Um, and then you're boarding one of the boats um, for the three hour trip across the lake. So it comes up through the channels here, um, down the Pasala Channel for a little way and then back and then down the Cristina Channel. Um, and down to this limit here, this is where guests can have a glimpse of the Uppsala Glacier in the, in the distance. Um, and all the while you're traveling down this, um, and down these kind of channels, you're passing these huge bright blue icebergs and you're spotting families of condors um, uh, kind of flying in the thermals as well. Um, if the wind is particularly strong on any of the days, the crossing can be a bit rocky, so that's something to bear in mind. Um, but their boats are very secure, uh, motor catamarans with extremely comfortable seats, a guide and drinks and snacks served on board. Um, and then this timetable shows us a bit about the, uh, the timings of um, the uh, departures of the boats. So the day trip service leaves um, quite early in the morning, um, around 8.30 a.m. from the port, arriving around 11.30 p.m. And the guest service arrives um, to parts a bit later. So at 11 o'clock from Puerto Bandera. This means that if passengers do happen to arrive on a very early flight from Buenos Aires, they can get to the port and then transfer on to Pristina the same day. Um, <clears throat> and then likewise on the way back, the guest service um, leaves a little bit earlier arriving into Calafate around 6 p.m. Uh, meaning they can go, guests can go on to the um, airport for an evening flight. However, if guests do have um, an extra day or they want to spend more time at the Estancia, they can opt to take the, uh, the day trip service. Um, the day trip service will have like, many more people. Uh, the guests of the lodge are given their own dedicated area. Um, but it's just much more of a busy service, it's less exclusive than the, than the guest service, which is a smaller boat and um, far fewer people on it. Okay. Um, the weather can change uh, quite radically, as you know, in Patagonia, it can change several times a day. Um, but the average summer temperature um, in this region is about 18 degrees Celsius. Um, and in the peak season, you have about 17 hours of daylight, um, which makes staying overnight here even more spectacular. Um, as the boat sails up the Christina Channel, guests are welcomed by the huge backdrop of mountains, um, which dwarf the small collection of buildings in the bay, which make up the Estancia and which are protected by the willow trees the family had planted many years before. Um, you can see here more clearly how the buildings are laid out with the accommodation houses in the foreground, um, the octagonal in amongst the trees, um, and the quinto just behind it. Um, the octagonal, which I just mentioned, is um, for exclusive use of the guests, um, which is here. Um, and then the buildings over to the left-hand side um, are the stables for the horses, and you may also be able to spot this um, water wheel on the river, which was um, originally built and used by the master's family when they lived here. Um, there are five identical chalets for guests to stay in, each with four bedrooms, so there's a total of 20 rooms, um, range of twin and doubles. Um, you enter, the guests enter through one front door of each chalet um, into a shared kind of living space, and then the rooms are separated um, into two each side of the buildings. Um, three of the chalets are located out in the open, so to speak, which are these ones we can see in front of us. Um, and then there are two more located just to right of this picture, which actually we can see here in the previous picture, um, which offer just a little bit more privacy um, as they're set within the, 
within the trees in the gardens. So if you have any clients who might be interested in um, a bit more privacy, um, then each of these chalets has their own names. So you can always kind of, um, we can let you know what those names are um, and you can always request a specific chalet for your guests through your DMC. Um, the rooms are really big, very warm, very comfortable, um, with huge wide views of the mountains beyond. Um, if you have families or people traveling together, uh, you can lock two of the rooms off together at a time, creating interconnecting rooms. Um, the rooms are not over the top luxury, but they have tried to maintain the simplicity of the Estancia style. Um, and they have very spacious ensuite bathrooms and lots of little modern touches as well. Um, but one thing to note is that the lodge is not actually on the grid system, it is generator run. And so the main power is turned off at night um, and the solar energy then kicks in. So if you do need to switch on a light in the middle of the night, you can do so, but it might mean that it can't necessarily charge many appliances at the same time. Um, this is the octagonal where guests are checked in, are checked out, um, has designated areas for guests to talk to the guides about the excursions they're going to take. It's where you can order a drink and where meals are served and it also has the kind of lovely comfortable sofas just to relax in. Um, it's also the only place of Wi-Fi um, in the whole lodge, which is still fairly weak as you might be able to imagine and which hopefully deters people from being stuck to their screens. Um, and just to reiterate that the use of the octagonal is um, exclusively for guests of the lodge and not for any other day trip. Um, the food and drink here is, is very, very good, um, really hearty, a lot of um, excellently cooked meat um, and you know, lots of Patagonian fare like meats and cheeses, um, lots of vegetables too. They have five different options for each course, which is kind of standard for like a two or three month period throughout the season. Um, and then they, are, they produce loads of really good fresh produce for, for pet lunches that you can put into your own Tupperware box and they give you that and a, and a bottle to take with you out on the excursion. Um, so all the activities and excursions um, they can offer. Um, so basically the Estancia guests will have about a menu of about 15 different excursions. Um, these include half day and full day hikes, um, many different horse riding trails, options for fishing and a very interesting historical tour. Um, so the activities, are, activities are taken in small groups um, and so the guides will talk to the guests about how to make the best use of their time during their stay. Um, as the days are long in Patagonia summers and the boats arrive around lunchtime and depart in the afternoon, this gives clients the opportunity to try out at least four activities during a two night stay, for example. Um, many guests end up taking kind of two half day excursions at either end and spend a full day on one long exploration. I would say a two or three night stay would be ideal um, at the Estancia. Um, so of Sana Viewpoint, this is basically the excursion that um, we would recommend anybody to take whilst they're staying in the Santa Cristina um, and generally all guests will, will go up and take this excursion. Um, there is the option of hiking up to the viewpoint um, but there was a road built um, by the Geographical Society and so most people tend to take the 4x4 four four, um, vehicle up there because then that gives clients the opportunity to hike back down to the Estancia. So if they were to hike up, then that would make the day very long. Um, but the opportunity is there if they wish to take it. Um, and that's also how the um, day trippers are able to come up to, to the viewpoint. It is an incredible panoramic view of the glacier and the ice field beyond. Um, I mean, obviously this is a really beautiful clear day, but even so, generally it's, it's so windy up there that the clouds tend to come and go. And, Mostly everybody will get some kind of viewpoint on there. Um, so this is an example of the, um, the route that the um, excursion takes. So this thicker red line 
is the road that takes people up to the viewpoint and then it's a 20 minute walk a bit further to, um, to a better viewpoint. And then the dotted line continues um, south to the Estancia. Um, and that trek is called the Fossil Canyon trek. Um, but for people who want to come back down to the Estancia uh, by car, they take this, this same route down. Um, the Fossil Canyon walk is perhaps one of the best walks I've taken in, in Patagonia. And that's having trekked a lot in Torres of Pine National Park as well as the Shelton area. Um, it is all downhill, which helps, but um, it's incredible because at every turn and every corner you go um, around, the landscape offers a new and different panoramic. Um, there are layers of many different geological formations um, all around the surrounding rocks, and there's a huge number of fossils to discover, including loads of shells and also many ammonites. Um, and the guide is there on hand just to talk us through um, kind of the geological formations and the fossils explaining at which point in our natural history they would have been conserved as they are. Um, the hike includes a stop halfway for lunch um, beside a lake, the, the pet lunch. And then once you come out of the canyon, you're coming down into the great plain of the, of the valley and you can see the Estancia in the distance. And yeah, it's a very, very worthwhile hike that I'd, I'd fully recommend. Um, here we can see the trails of a few other hikes that guests can take in the surrounding area. So we have Cascada de los Perros, um, which uh, is just a very short walk heading kind of inland, so to speak, from the Estancia, which is up here, just a three mile walk. And that's a really good introductory walk that guests can do when they first arrive in the afternoon. It's um, not strenuous at all, it's flat. Um, and you've got this really beautiful kind of aspect of these kind of crashing waterfall, a little bit like Salta Grande in Torres del Paine. Um, and then if you want something more strenuous and um, for a kind of a, a full day hike, you can carry on to uh, Mirador Cristina, which is up in the hills here. And then another half day hike, which can be taken before you take the afternoon um, navigation back to El Calfate, is this one, which is Cerro Cardenero hike. Um, which it goes right up into these rocks here, and you've got incredible views back to the Estancia and across to the mountains over here. Um, so this is an example of the views offered from Mirador Cristina, which is um, kind of inland from the lodge, um, which can also be taken by horseback. So with the horseback riding, um, I think, I mean, they have a dedicated gaucho who looks after the horses. They've got all the equipment that you need, so hard hats and chaps. Um, and the trails can range from quite flat in the valley, like going through rivers, to up in the hills um, and some cantering. They have about 12 horses um, available and all, they're all very well trained. Um, so there you go. This here is um, an image of the view from Mount Carmel. So here you can see how the views go back with the Estancia Cristina here in the distance, um, which is again a really beautiful, worthwhile hike. And actually with this one, if guests were staying three nights, for example, they wanted to do a really full hike, this does go further um, across the valley, it goes all the way down here, um, and then it would be trekking back or getting a boat back. Um, but again, that's, that's an option that, you, that guests could consider. So yes, there are longer day hikes in the Valley Mountains. If guests do want to do really big hikes up in the mountains, um, then they may need to know that in advance and they may need to get some extra guides in. This is another view um, across the Uppsala Glacier in the distance um, and Lago Anita uh, from the Mirador Cristina. Um, so there are optional um, fishing excursions at um, Sancia Cristina, um, which are taken on the Rio Catarina and Lake Pearson and Laguna de la Pesca. And it's specifically for rainbow trout and Chinook salmon. Um, from what I understand, the fishing here is absolutely world class. In fact, there are groups who um, book out the Estancia um, for, um, for fishing um, specifically. And in peak season, they might be able to catch something like 30 fish in one day. It's all catch and release. It's all um, they're released back into the wild. So if you have any clients interested in kind of fishing or, or speciality fishing, then do let us know. We'll be able to tell you more about that. 
Um, the historical tour takes place around the grounds of the lodge with a very well curated display of artifacts and belongings and machinery used by the Marxist family. Um, the old shearing shed was recently transformed into this interpretive area where the guys will take guests through the hardships and achievements um, that the master's family went through. Um, and guests are also taken to view the original boat the family used to cross the lake um, and the bridges they built over the rivers and the water wheel and the old church, all built by their own hands with uh, materials um, that they bought themselves and collected. And then as you know, um, and as I've mentioned a couple of times, the Santa Cristina also offer um, day trips to guests coming from El Calafate. Um, so now there are four options, there used to be three, but the fourth was, um, I think, uh, released last season with uh, horse riding as an option. Um, I won't delve too much in the specifics of these, but they range from a quite active excursion, uh, which is um, trekking, so taking the, the Fossil Canyon trek um, and having lunch on the way to just um, going up to the viewpoint and then coming back down again, or maybe even just doing the short hike to the Los Perros waterfall. Um, and then these two include a big Patagonian lunch in the Quincho restaurant. Um, this is an example of the um, boat and vehicles that they use. The above um, picture is the boat um, which is used by the day trippers. Actually, they have um, just um, bought a new boat, a much bigger boat, um, <clears throat> which is a catamaran, it's more stable. Um, and then the cars below are the four by four vehicles, which can fit about 10 people in, which take people up to the Upsana Glacier viewpoint. So reasons to stay overnight at the Estancia. Um, apart from kind of the whole list of excursions and the excellent hospitality and very warm lodgings and everything like that, I think for me the best thing about staying overnight at the Estancia is the pure isolation and the remoteness and the sense of wilderness. You are literally surrounded by these enormous mountains and the swirling winds and um, an amazing bird life everywhere. Um, and once the day trippers have left, then really you're there all by yourselves, got no one else around, and it's an extraordinary feeling. Um, and something else to mention is that the day trippers and the, and the guests from the hotel, they are kept quite separate. So um, you, do, you rarely come across each other, and it really doesn't feel like there are kind of crowds of people encroaching on your space. Um, they've, they've managed that extremely well. Um, so yeah, I'd say that any um, visit to a distancia would require an overnight, even if it's just for one night, you could, to get that extra time um, and space kind of in the area is, is fully recommended. Um, okay, and now we um, head north into Peru um, and the Andi, Andean region between Cusco and Machu Picchu. Um, mountain lodges of Peru have been operating since around 2005. Um, with the first South and Thai Lodge completed in around 2007. Um, their ethos is um, to create a unique adventure travel experiences with core competency in hospitality, lodging and a local personalised service, along with a very high degree of commitment to social and environmental sustainability. Um, they currently own three quite different and beautiful hotels in Cusco, and they also run their two signature adventures, the Lares and South and Thai Trek, plus um, other trekking itineraries, which offer something a bit different. Um, I can send you more information on that in the follow-up if you like. I'll be concentrating on the seven-day, six-night lodge-to-lodge self and tie trek ending in Machu Picchu. So this is a map of the route which shows where the lodges are situated deep within the mountains. Um, the lodges are not located too far away from each other, relatively. Um, meaning that the itinerary is ideal for the discerning passenger who um, would like an it active itinerary and wants to explore the region on foot, but who doesn't want to be exhausted at the end of the day. Um, one of the great advantages of this itinerary is that the trekking generally only takes um, half of two or two thirds of the day, um, and there are days for acclimatization, meaning that the afternoons are generally spent relaxing at the lodges or trying out an optional excursion. 
Um, so if I can show you here, this is the first lodge, South and Thai Lodge, um, and then the route takes you up and over the South and Thai Pass, to the Waira Lodge, um, and then you're getting into kind of more tropical and forested areas to Kolpa Lodge, and then you, you're traversing along the valley and mountains to Lugma Lodge, which is the last um, MLP lodge before your last trekking day and train to Aguas Calientes. Um, although it says El Mapi there, the, uh, the hotel they actually use is the um, Inca Terra Pueblo in Machu Picchu. Um, okay. The Salkantai Lodge to Lodge trek is seven day, six night, all inclusive adventure starting and ending in Cusco and which runs from um, February to December. I know it says March there, but they have open dates in February under normal, normal um, circumstances when everything isn't shut down. The, um, the groups are maximum 12, and there is an English speaking guide for each eight packs. There's no minimum, um, or the minimum is one rather. Um, the group also has a mule or horse on hand if the get, any of the guests suffer from the altitude. Um, before the guests um, depart on this, they uh, are able to leave their main large luggage in Cusco, particularly if they stayed at one of the NRP um, hotels. Um, and then they are able to put their overnight and, uh, clothes and, and change of clothes and wash bag and whatnot in um, an MLP duffel bag, which is then sent on from lodge to lodge at each stop. Um, and then they carry their essential daytime items with them, you know, waterproofs and hats and sun cream and camera. And, and whatnot. Each of the lodges um, is a lovely cozy retreat, all with, equipped with hot water, heating, ensuite rooms, um, a bar, um, Wi-Fi connection, um, hot tubs hot tubs outside, and also constant feeding. Um, the package is full board, so it includes all your food, all the snacks, and also in, uh, includes um, alcoholic drinks. And the package includes uh, the guided tour of Machu Picchu at the end, as well as tickets to Wine Picchu. Um, and if tickets to Wine Picchu don't have to be available, if somebody may have booked late, um, then they'll have a ticket to Machu Picchu Mountain. Um, and then the programme is also available once a month on horseback. On day one, the itinerary starts from Cusco and travels mainly by road to the little known archaeological site of Kinarumiak, um, which is down here. Um, before heading to Moyapata um, and visit to an MLP's NGO called Yanapana, uh, where they support a number of female-led cooperatives producing honey jams and textiles. Um, further along, lunch is served at El Pedreal, which is a beautiful situated uh, restaurant in the hills and surrounded by freshly grown produce. Um, following this, guests are driven to the start of their first trek, um, which is a path following the side of the mountain to Sorai Pampa, where the first lodge is located. Here are a few images of Kilarumiok, the archaeological site with its unique carvings in the rocks, um, which are really not seen anywhere else in the area. Um, this site is small and very quiet, and it's set on the side of the hill, surrounded by local villages who maintain the site for visitors. Um, guests really won't come across many other tourists here at all, will often have the place themselves um, and have these beautiful views out across the valley. Um, and then after the visit to Moyapata, you're taken to this um, beautiful restaurant at Pedregal. And not only do guests get to sample all the fresh produce, which is actually grown on site, um, the guide also takes them through the origins and benefits of all the endemic foods grown in, in this part of Peru and the other parts of Peru, so all the corns and potato and chili and different tropical fruits. And you can also be taken on a guided tour of, of the gardens to see how they grow each of the different each of the different crops and vegetables. They're very interested in biodynamic and permaculture and um, agriculture here as well. Um, so here we have the start of the first walk to the lodge, which is a gentle two to three hour hike, and takes guests along um, kind of irrigation channel, channels and um, kind of farm trails. Um, and offers the first glimpse of the incredible Sarpentai Peak in the distance. So the first two nights are spent at the Sorai Pampa Lodge um, to give guests the opportunity to acclimatise. Um, this lodge is the largest on the trek with 12 bedrooms 
Um, and this is because it's also used for guests who just want to do a three day self entire itinerary, which I'll show you at the end. Um, which they do day trips from this particular lodge. Um, it was the first lodge to be built in the area and is surrounded by these beautiful flat grasslands where their horses are left to graze. Each of the rooms has a small balcony and direct views of the valley leading up to Southern Thai Mountain. Um, it's really beautiful. Um, the food served here and throughout the trek um, is really good. It's, it's really hearty, it's very well um, thought out. Um, it's all local produce enhanced with wonderful Peruvian flavours and influences. Um, I'm a huge fan of Peruvian foods, so when I was presented with three course meals for every meal and snacks in between, um, yeah, I was, I was delighted. And then in the group that I was in, there was a woman, Australian woman, who um, was gluten-free, dairy-free, and I think vegan as well. And they were able to cater perfectly well for, for her needs. Um, each of the lodges, as I mentioned earlier, has its own outdoor hot tub, um, where guests can relax with a pisco sour or a glass of wine after a good hike. Um, and Soro Pampa Lodge also has its own herb infused sauna. Um, which is made up with kind of thatch and eucalypts branches, um, which is generally very well received. So after um, your first night um, at Southern Thai Lodge, at the Sorai Pampa Lodge, um, day two is basically an acclimatisation day because you're at 3,800 metres above sea level. Um, and so this includes a half day hike up to Ormond Thai Lake here, which is about an hour and a half's walk each way. Um, the guests depart fairly early in the morning, straight after breakfast with the guide, um, and on the way you collect a local shaman from the village um, who is there to demonstrate a typical Inca ceremony right up at the lake, giving thanks and blessings to the mountain gods. Um, these local shamans have been kind of friends of MLP since they built the lodge. They were consulted over many months before the construction um, with the local communities and asked to come and bless the grounds where they're building. Uh, was going on. And so this is a very good example of the kind of upheld community values that um, Mountain Lodges of Peru have. This is a photo of the sacred Umantai Lake, which is fed from the glacier above, which is sadly now much receded, but it's still a really beautiful spot um, and kind of a, a, a beautiful place to be able to witness this kind of Inca ceremony. Um, it feels very humbling, so the shaman comes along with all these artefacts and, um, and things that he's collected from the markets um, and then wraps up a package and blesses the mountains and blesses each of us. And then later that evening, um, we're there and we gather around the fire and he puts it in the fire so that it's all released into, into the atmosphere. Yeah, so it was a wonderful experience. Um, so after your second night at the lodge, um, day three is the trek up and over the South and Thai Pass. Um, this is the most strenuous day because um, it's about six to eight hours hiking. Um, but by this point, guests should have acclimatised enough what with a couple of nights in Cusco and also a couple of nights at Soraya Um So the path is at 4,630 metres above sea level and the guide will always make sure that guests are going at a steady and manageable pace and keep an eye on anyone who might be struggling. Um, as I mentioned before, there is a mule or horse with a porter to help anyone who, who is being affected by, by the altitude. Um, although the route on the map here doesn't look that far, you're going from sort of South Entire across to wider, um, the trek does last from between six and eight hours depending on the group. So this part here is all uphill through the valley, and then you're winding down um, to wider Lodge. Um, obviously you're very close to Southern Thai Peak up at the pass, and so you've got these really spectacular views of the different kind of landscapes and, and glaciers, and um, more than likely spot a couple of condors in, in the sky. Um, due to the acclimatisation, generally everyone who reaches the summit is in, is in good spirits and a good state to do so and um, feels a real sense of achievement of having got there. Um, and then coming over the pass and into the next valley, you realise how isolated the region you're delving into is becoming. You're descending from the pass and then you see a little kind of yellow tent in, in the distance and you realise that the local cooks from the 
next lodge and set up a tent ready for your next meal. And then it's about an hour or so down to Wairamachai in the next lodge, um, just as the sun is kind of dipping behind the mountain tops. Waira Lodge is um, slightly less kind of sophisticated um, than Sorakampa, but just as comfortable um, with a wonderful team of smiling staff awaiting the group's arrival. Um, it's quite a magical place as the clouds here are constantly moving in and out of the valley and it's surrounded by really interesting rock formations and luscious green pasture. Um, the lodge has six rooms and a comfortable dining seating area, again with heating, hot water and they're in a hot tub in the courtyard. Um, and then the next day is quite a short day of hiking, relatively, and it's mostly downhill to uh, Kolpa Lodge. Um, so here we have Waira Lodge, and this is the route that takes you down to Kolpa Lodge. Um, guests will start to notice the change of scenery from damp high altitude clouds to more luscious and forested landscape. Um, with lots of ferns and different more active bird life in the trees. As the hike is only about four hours, the group arrives in time for a very special lunch at the lodge. The staff here will have been working hard to heat up the rocks ready for a pachamanca, which is a Peruvian kit bake, and offers up all the delights of many different kinds of potato and corns and meats, including guinea pig um, and vegetables. Um, it's, it's a huge feast um, laid out for the whole group, but one is likely to induce an afternoon siesta. Um, Later that evening, the group are given a pisco sour making class before having a light dinner. Um, and what's interesting is that each of the lodge has its own particular decor and style, and Colpa Lodge is decorated with some extraordinary traditional costumes for all around the country, mainly those worn um, during festivities and carnivals. So it does actually offer that um, extra kind of cultural aspect as well. And they also have their own resident massage therapist for anyone suffering aches and pains. Um, the next day the trekking is slightly longer but again mostly all downhill and traversing through the valley. Um, the last stretch is in a vehicle and takes the group along the road to Nukumabamba. So you can see here, um, this is the, the road and this is the last bit of the trekking that takes, takes you down the valley. Um, as you might imagine, with a more tropical climate, many or orchids and other tropical plants can be spotted along the way. Um, and then just before reaching the last lodge, guests are taken to the small organic coffee farm run by a local couple who take the group through the whole process of coffee making, from picking the beans to the actual drinking. Um, and guests can also have a go at roasting and grinding the beans to make their own brew, and also given the opportunity to sample the local coffee liqueur. Um, Lukuma Lodge is set amongst some really lush tropical trees and plants with incredible views over the valley. Um, the welcome, as with all the lodges, is warm and hospitable and instead of a hot drink, you're welcomed with a very cold, fresh fruit juice um, and a cold towel. Um, so you're really in kind of, kind of subtropical climates here. Um, and then the last day of hiking takes the group up and over Yaktapata Pass on an Inca trail with lots of rocky steps and small archaeological aspects along the way. Um, and this route also offers the first glimpse of the site of Machu Picchu. Um, so here is Lukma Lodge and this is the Inca Trail Trail, not the Inca Trail but it's part of the Inca Trail Network. Um, <clears throat> this is the road that actually takes people around to the hydroelectric station but this is a much more interesting way to go. Um, and then it winds all the way down the valley to the station. Um, Yaktapata archeological site is a small collection of courtyards, trapezoidal doorways and water channels. Um, and once you've kind of walked through these and discovered it, you're greeted with the most incredible profile of Machu Picchu um, site from the Southwest. Um, it really is quite a spectacular, breathtaking site. And it makes all those days of trekking even more worthwhile. So here you have the site of Machu Picchu with Huayna Picchu here on the left hand side and this is Machu Picchu Mountain here on the right hand side. Um, after lunch at a restaurant with the same views over to Machu Picchu the path winds down all the way to the valley it gets very hot and humid at this point to the hydroelectric train station where the group can freshen up before taking the train on to Aguas Calientes. Um, 
And then in Aguascalientes, the group transferred to the Hotel Inca Terra, Pablo Machu Picchu, um, which, as many of you already know, is a beautiful hotel with casitas surrounded by trees inhabited by many hummingbirds um, and other wildlife. And then the next morning, uh, the group had taken to Machu Picchu for their guided tour. Um, those who have the Wine and Picchu tickets, which is included in the package, um, go up earlier and then they meet the rest of the group for the tour. Um, and if, I think I mentioned, if there isn't Wine and Picchu tickets, the Mount, uh, Machu Picchu mountain tickets will be given instead. Um, and then after their tour, they have lunch and take the late afternoon train back to Cusco. And then this is just an example of a three day South and Thai itinerary uh, where they use Soro Pampa Lodge just as the base um, for the itinerary with day trips out to the pass and back down again and the day trip across to on top. All right, that's slightly longer than the 45 minutes that I was hoping, but thank you very much for listening. I don't know why my video didn't appear on your screen, so I'm very sorry about that. Um, but I will take any questions now in the chat box if anybody wants to. I will also be sending um, a recording of this to you all with a follow-up and anything else um, that you wish to, to ask me, you can send me an email. So I'm going to stop sharing now so I can see you all. Um, and yeah, I hope you found it informative and helpful. Hello everyone, well, everybody's got their, <laughs> their videos off so I can't see you, but let me see. Very good, very good, thank you very much. Anyone got any questions? Oh, you could see my video. Okay, good. I'm glad I couldn't see me, so I didn't know what I was looking like. It's very nice to be back in the fold. I've been on furlough for three months, so um, I'm very pleased to be back in our office with our lovely South American man. Um, does anybody have any questions? As Simon would say, don't leave me hanging. Can I just have one at least? <laughs> no? Okay. Can you send on the details so you can get prices and how to book? Yeah, absolutely. I'll send the rates. Um, yeah, and anything else. So yeah, thank you everybody. Um, and I'll, how long did I, <laughs> how long did the Fossil Canyon Walk take? Um, that's a good question. So it's eight miles in total, um, and it felt like it took much longer than a normal eight mile trip would, mainly because there's so much to see. Um, it was a full day excursion. We left after breakfast, um, spent quite a bit of time at the Uppsala Glacier viewpoint, and then it was probably a good like five hours, I guess, um, back down to the um, Estancia. All right, you're welcome, everybody. Have a great day, and I'll see you in the next webinar, whenever that might be.